chalkboard. Uh, what we got going on today with uh, video 28 or is the following. What we're going to do is I want to review matrices. Matrices play an important uh, role in the calculations of coefficients uh, for regression models. Uh, you know, the things we've done so far, use the formulas, use least squares. Uh, but once we get into multiple regression uh, matrices, uh, put it this way, when someone talks to me about um, the calculation of, uh, calculation of coefficients in a multiple regression model, the first thing I think is, can I use technology? If I can, I'm going to use R, SPSS, uh, SAS, whatever. But if I'm looking at these and from a theoretical perspective, we're going to do the calculations by hand. I don't think least squares. I don't think formulas. I think matrices. And you're going to see it's going to be uh, the simplest way, I think, to, uh, to, um, to perform the calculation of coefficients once we get into multiple regression models. So guys, first of all, I want to review matrices plus uh, I want to give an introduction to the role of matrices for regression. Now some of this stuff is going to be review. Uh, you, you know probably now, by now the way I teach. Uh, if there's a question whatsoever about whether or not it needs to be reviewed, it's going to be reviewed. Uh, I'd rather take up extra time, bore you for a few minutes than for someone in here you know, for us to get two or three lectures down the road and you're like, oh my gosh, I forgot all about this matrix stuff. So, um, so guys, let's, uh, let's start with some, just some mate. And also, uh, I should say, uh, matrices, uh, with R. So we've got, first of all, review of matrices, kind of the role of matrices, um, for regression. And the third thing will be matrices with R. Actually, it's going to go, this will be first. Uh, matrices with R will be second. And third, we'll actually look at, at uh, the role of matrices uh, for regression. So uh, the, the, uh, the presentation of the, um, of the topics is going to be a little bit different than what I did there. But uh, you know what? I think you guys can handle it. All right, guys, what's a matrix? Well, matrix... Uh, is, um, well, I don't know, let's just say a collection of data. And we're going to look at it you know, from a statistics perspective. Uh, this arranged uh, let's say in an array of M rows and N columns. Pretend I can spell columns. That was ugly. Okay, so, uh, you know, gang, if we got a two by three matrix, which is written by this, well, obviously, there are infinitely many, uh, but we typically give matrices uh, a name with a capital uh, letter. So if I have a two by three matrix, um, uh, I'm expecting something with two rows and three columns. Don't you wish it would stay this easy? <laughs> okay. Uh, now, uh, you know, we're going to get into a lot of stuff with matrices, again, how to do this in R and so on and so forth. But, uh, you know, the first thing I want to look at are just, just some operations on matrices. Uh, we're going to do some of this uh, in statistics. Well, guys, obviously we can add and subtract matrices. Uh, we can multiply matrices. Uh, we're going to look at uh, how to find the transpose of matrices. And uh, we want to be able to find the uh, inverse of a square matrix. 
uh, all of these things, especially these down here, play a uh, play a role in uh, the operational matrices and uh, uh, in regression. So, guys, uh, simply put, um, if we're going to add two matrices. Then matrix, uh, the size of matrix uh, A must be equal to the size of matrix B. And adding two matrices is as simple as just simply adding the uh, corresponding entries. So if we have Uh, and this is matrix A, and this is matrix B. Both matrices are two by threes. So guys, the sum of the matrix A plus B is also going to be a size two by three, and it's just going to be the sum of the corresponding entries. Okay, and you guys can handle the rest of that. Uh, luckily for us, the same thing happens in subtracting matrices. So if we're going to subtract matrix um, B from matrix A then we would just go 2 minus 1 3 minus a minus 1 and so on and so forth alright we're not going to do a lot of matrix uh, addition and subtraction but uh, you know it does come up now, something we are going to do uh, is we're going to learn to multiply matrices. Now, um, a little bit more. Let me let me go back to the beginning. Uh, sometimes we're going to run into things called a row vector, uh, and we're going to run into a column vector. And a row vector has one row. A column vector has one column. So if we have something like 2, 4, 7, uh, this is a 1 by 3 matrix, so we would call that a row vector for three columns. And if we have a 2, 4, 7 like this, uh, we have a column vector, um, one column and three rows. Okay? Now, uh, multiplying matrices. Uh, so if we take the matrix A times B, and let's say matrix A is M by N, and matrix B is an R by S. First and foremost, for the product to exist, then the columns of matrix A must be equal to the rows of matrix B. So these two numbers right here must be the same. If they are, then A times B will be an M by S matrix. So kind of conveniently, these values on the outside determine the size of the matrix. Now let's just go through a, um, uh, an illustration of this. And let's say that A, for example, is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And let's say B is a... Um, one, negative one, two, zero. Now first of all, we notice here that A is a three by two, and we notice that B is a two by two. Now the inner parts, columns of row, or I'm sorry, the columns of uh, matrix A, the rows of matrix B are the same, so the product does exist. 
So the matrix A times B uh, will be three rows. and two columns coming from this. Now the way that we find these is we use a linear combination of the terms. So let's get rid of all this. We know now that we can multiply these. So I want to look at the product of A and B. So the racer thing's kind of cool. All right. So guys, what we're going to have, we're going to have a matrix again uh, with um, and this is a little cumbersome, but uh, you know, once we get into to, to using matrices in, in regression, we're actually going to either look at it theoretically or we're going to use um, R or even the graphing calculator works perfectly fine. So Guys, the first entry there, we need a, um, a linear combination of row one, column one. So right now we have a uh, focus on the one and the two, the row one, and we look at the column one of B. So we're going to take one times one and two times two, add those together, and we get five. To get this entry, Uh, we're going to concentrate on row one with column two. So this entry right here is going to take one times negative one plus two times zero. So guys, that should be no stretch of the imagination that this is a negative one. And we got really small calculations here, so I'm just going to go ahead and multiply these uh, in my head. So for example, if we're wanting now to can be concerned with this entry, again, that's from row two in column one. So this entry right here is going to be three times one uh, plus four times zero. So guys, no stretch of the imagination that the entry here would be three. And the next entry is going to be negative uh, three. Entry on the bottom is going to be five times uh, five plus 12. And the other entry is going to be negative five plus zero, negative five. So this would be our product. Now, if we were looking at, again, product uh, of B times A. Now, remember, B was a 2 by 2 And matrix A was a 3 by 2 I think. Yeah. So notice that the inner two uh, aren't equal, so... The product, of course, does not exist. Now, some other things we'll get into is we're going to get into the transpose of the matrix. So if A was, for example, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, then the transpose of the matrix, which I will give as A uh, to the, looks like to the T power, so uh, AT, is going to be just interchanging the rows and the columns. So... Uh, notice here we have a 2 by 3. So down here we're going to have a 3 by 2 where the rows become the columns and the columns become the rows. So we will have 1, 4, 2, 5, and 3, 6. So this row became the first column. This row became the second column. And I'm going to show you how to do all this in... Uh, in uh, in R, okay. Another thing that we're going to run into is the inverse of a matrix. Now, 
Now, if we have a square matrix, uh, and if the matrix, uh, the inverse exists, then the product of A inverse A, which will be A, A inverse, will be equal to the identity matrix. So we have a two by two matrix here. So the identity matrix, as I'm sure you remember, would just be uh, the one that has ones on the diagonal. So, um, Guys, I uh, think we're pretty well set to, um, to to do some stuff in R and see, uh, you know, set the foundation for some of this stuff. So I'm going to go back and, uh, you know, I'm going to, first of all, uh, I want to look at how we would set up, for example, this matrix right here. So I'll tell you what, let, let, let me, I want to do something else. All right, so getting ready for R. Uh, I want to set up some matrices here. So, uh, first of all, let's let uh, matrix A equal. Um, no, I don't know. Actually, I wrote down some things earlier that might be kind of nice to look at. Um, let's let matrix A be this. Um, And the reason, guys, don't you know, the, the difference, the big difference in, in you and me in this in this crazy game, is I know where we're headed. Uh, so, um, so there's some things that I'm, you know, setting here that um, that uh, kind of set the stage for some some stuff that I think is important. So uh, just bear with me; it'll all be okay. Uh, <laughs> so things I want to do. Uh, I tell you what, let's 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 do some some other stuff too. Uh, we're going to need to look at, uh, say, a row vector. And then let's look at um, you know me that'll drive me nuts. And let's let's say we have a, a a column vector C that looks like this. Um, let me think. What else do I want to accomplish here? I want to look at design matrix uh, column kind of row vectors, column vectors. Um, Yeah, you know, actually, I think this will be okay. So, guys, we're, I'm going to run over to jump over to R. So, I want to when I reference A, B, and C, these are the matrices that I'm actually going to be referencing. Uh, you know, A is a three by three matrix, B is uh, a row vector, and uh, so it's, it's a one by four matrix, one by four uh, row vector, and C is obviously a, a five by one, so it's a column vector. So, I'm going to want to show you how to set some of this stuff up, okay? Now, first thing that, uh, the first thing you gotta understand is setting up matrices in R. Uh, I've been looking at this now for a couple of weeks and there are many, 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 many ways to do it. Uh, and uh, what I'm looking for is the simplest way and, well, maybe, I don't even know if it's the simplest way, uh, but the way I'm looking for is something that's easily learned and something that uh, applies to where we're headed. So uh, if I'm wanting to create um, matrix A, which is a, you know, a three by three. Now, for example, what I want to start out with here is let's assume that I forget the ones. 
And let's say that I'm working with the matrix 334334. Now, I don't want any, any misunderstanding here. Let's say, for example, come on, baby. <laughs> okay. Let's say, for example, and I'm just going to call this matrix D, that I get sloppy and I get 334334. Was it four three? Yeah. Which is okay, right? Um, because thing, things we're going to learn here in a couple of videos is uh, there's something kind of special about that row of ones. Or I'm sorry, that column of ones right there. So uh, let's say again, let's say that we just uh, have this row, this vector D, and we want to create this vector D in R, okay? And then we'll say, oh shoot, we messed up. We should have included those ones. So uh, I'll show you how to do that because sometimes we're going to need to take a matrix like D and create a column of ones uh, in the first column. So guys, what I would probably do here is I would just call this data um, because I'm not that creative to call it anything else. And I would just go get in a habit of reading my data, uh, row one, row two, row three, and so on and so forth. Now, if you choose to read this data in columns, which would be three, four, three, 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 four, then you've got to do a little something different. But if we all agree on a standard procedure, entering our data in terms of this C operation that we get here, in terms of putting all the rows, row one, row two, row three, row four, up to row N, uh, then there, we're not going to have to modify what we do here. So now I'm going to store this as matrix D. And I do matrix. The first thing I do is talk about the data, the number. So uh, I call that data, so I'm going to use that. Uh, the next thing that I do is I specify the number of rows I want, which were three. And then I do the end for the column. And guys, of course, that was two. Now, the next thing I do is I come in and I do by row equals true. So that tells R, instructs R, that I enter my data back here, whatever I call this back here. You know, it, 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 you know I can't find my, <laughs> there it is. I can't, couldn't find my, my mouse. So whatever I call this, it's instructing R to read this by the row, or I'm sorry, that this was entered by the row. So guys, uh, put in D, and you'll see that we have uh, precisely what we need. Now, <clears throat> we're sitting there thinking, uh, darn, uh, you know, we, we got kind of sloppy, or sometimes it's not just sloppy, it's, um, uh, it's, it's by design that we actually want our matrix A to be this matrix D, but we want ones in the first column. Well, guys, it turns out it's really easy to do, so we can transfer that information into our matrix A using what's called C bind. So kind of think of it as, as a welder to the columns. We're putting an extra column in, and we want it to go first. Oh, guys, shoot, forget I did that. Sorry, 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 sorry. First thing we have to do is tell the um, uh, uh, what we want to put in that uh, column. So what I want to do here is I want to put three ones. And I think there's even a better way. If we get into like 15 ones, I think we can do some sort of ones repeat 15 times or something. But I'd have to, I'd have to think about that a little more. So. Uh, so what I want to do here is I want to create my matrix A, and I want to do, again, C bind. I want Z to go first, and then I want my matrix D to go second. So matrix A now is precisely what I need. Now, obviously, there's another way to do this. I could have in the middle, or I'm sorry, in the beginning, gone data one, uh, and read the columns, which would be one, three, three, one, four, three, one, three, four. And gone, um, I don't know, let's call this um, A2. 
So matrix data one in row equals uh, three in column equals three and by row equals true. So guys, A2 is again going to be precisely what we had before. Now you might uh, say again, well, let's just not forget to put that first column in. It's not about that. That's not why I'm showing you that. Uh, the reason I'm showing you that is for something that's uh, going to come up in what we call a design matrix in, um, in, um, um, you know, in, in, in our uh, regression. All right, uh, gang, let's say we wanted, uh, again, let's go back to, um, so we've created matrix A and matrix D. And uh, so uh, let's go back and see how we would create uh, matrix B. Well, it turns out that's going to be really, really easy. So uh, what I would do here is just uh, call this data2. And again, what I'm doing here is creating uh, the row vector matrix B. So I would do one, two, four, seven. And I'm sure you know what's coming up here, right? So matrix B is going to be matrix data two in row equal one in column equal four by row equals true. Uh, pop, 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 pop. Okay, I see what I did. So in matrix data two, in row equals one, in column equals four, and by row equals true. So guys, matrix B will be the row vector that we want. All right, let's create col uh, column vector. Uh, so let's now create uh, column vector C. So I don't know, let's call this data three. And we have a negative one, two, three, five, zero. So boys and girls, we wanna call this C. So we have matrix for data three in row equal one. Oh, in row equal five. In column equal one. And we entered our data by row equals true. So guys, matrix C is exactly what we need. All right. Now, I want to come in and, uh, you know, keeping matrix A, so... And remember, matrix A was 1, 3, 3, uh, 1, 4, 3, 3, 4. Um, now, I want to create a couple of other matrices. Um, well, I'll tell you what, let's, uh, let's see uh, what was... Um, our matrix D. So matrix, uh, okay, I'm going to be able to, to illustrate some stuff here um, for, for getting the product. So um, guys, let's, uh, I'll tell you what, let's just, just override some things and um, create um, So three, six, nine. Okay, what I want to do is I just want to create another three by three matrix to uh, demonstrate some stuff. All right, so let's go, uh, let's just call this matrix E. And uh, so guys, I'm gonna use matrix data three. I want uh, in rows to be equal to three 
in n column to be equal to 3 in by row equal true. All right, guys, so what you see there is I have a 3 by 3 matrix here. So uh, now, guys, obviously, if I wanted to take A and add E, notice that uh, the first uh, of A1 is added to the first entry, top left entry. And notice, for example, the 3 here is added to the 4 in this position to get uh, the 7. Uh, we could also go A minus E. And what that does is it takes, for example, this position is 3, subtracts this position, which is 3, which obviously gives us uh, a value there of 0. Now, uh, let's get into multiplying just a little bit. So, uh, first of all, could we multiply... A by uh, what do we have D? Well, A is a three by three, uh, D is a three by two, so we could multiply those, right? But if we go A times D, we're going to get in trouble. And what this does, and I really wish the, it didn't have this feature. Put it this way, this is not what we need. Uh, when we multiply A times D, it doesn't carry out the multiplication of the matrices because it can't multiply these. However, if we did A times E, it would multiply these, and what it would do is it would multiply the corresponding parts. So the top left is a 1, the top left is a 3, so it's going to give us a 3 as that product. The gas Caution, caution, caution. This is not the product that we want. OK, um, so let's. Um, examine uh, three things. Uh, I want to see how we do matrix multiplication, how we look at the inverse, and how we find the transpose. Okay, so matrix multiplication first. the correct way. It's not that the other isn't correct. The other just multiplies entries and uh, in, in my opinion at the end of the day gives us something that's completely meaningless at least in the uh, application of, of regression and statistics. Uh, well in the application of regression let's put it that way. So what we want to do here so let's multiply A which is a uh, 3 by 3 Uh, not B, we say D, which is a uh, 3 by 2. Now, uh, you know, this product, when we tried to multiply back here, it gives us an error because the only way that it can multiply corresponding entries is if we have the same dimension. Uh, we don't have the same size matrix here, but to multiply the matrices in a standard way, the two enter the columns of the first matrix and the row of the second are the same, and we're expecting a 3 by 2 matrix. Okay? Well, guys, the way we do this is the following. Uh, it took me forever to figure this out, so if we take A and then we go uh, percentage sign 
multiply, percentage sign, and D, this tells R that we want to multiply the matrices in a standard procedure using the linear combination of rows and columns as A times D. And you'll notice in this situation that we actually get something that does have, uh, 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 the product does exist. Now let's go back and check. And remember, this 24 would come from what? A linear combination of the row 1 of, of A and the column 1 of D. So when we go back up here to A and D, we're going to do a linear combination of 1, 3, 3 with, well, I can't just do that, but 3, 4, 3. So guys, we can do it in our, in our head because we're clever that way, okay? So 1 times 3 is 3, 4 times 3 is 12, and 3 times 3 is 9. 9 plus 12 plus 1 is... Wait a minute, I don't think I did that right. Uh, 9, 12 and 3. So we have 1 times 3 is 3, 4 times 3 is 12, 15, and 3 times 3 is 9, so we get 24. Now, what do you think is going to happen when I try this? Now, we typically live in a commutative world, right? 2 times 3, same thing as 3 times 2. But uh, you're going to see in matrices that we don't have that. Uh, because again, matrix D is a uh, three by two, while matrix A is a three by three. So, guys, the columns for the first matrix, the rows of the uh, the uh, second matrix uh, don't uh, they don't jive, so the the uh, product doesn't exist. Okay, second thing I want to examine. Uh, let's take a look at the inverse of a matrix. Uh, and uh, or matrix A. Now we need a square matrix, uh, and uh, the way we do the uh, inverse is kind of weird. Okay, <laughs> I think it is. I don't know. So uh, let's go that A inverse is going to be uh, solve. Mm, I think yeah. A, so A inverse is this matrix right here. Now, in isolation, it doesn't mean much, but if we go A, percentage, multiply, percentage, A inverse, we get the identity matrix, and if we go A inverse, percentage, times percentage A, we get also the uh, identity matrix, okay? So that's cool. Uh, now, um, let's examine transpose. How do we find the uh, transpose? Remember, transpose just interchanges the, the rows and the columns. So, um, i tell you what, let's uh, examine the transpose for matrix uh, D. And guys, remember again, matrix D uh, is a 3 by 2, I think. <laughs> Get so much for going on in my head here, yeah. Uh, it's a 3 by 2, so we're expecting the transpose to be a 2 by 3, just interchanging rows and columns. So the way we do this is um, uh, just... Uh, so the transpose for D, we'll call it, is just T of the matrix name, so D. So the transpose for D, you can see, is precisely what we um, expected it to be. 
so guys, uh, you know, put this in, uh, in, uh, I mean, this is, this is tall cotton right here. This is, this is what we want to be, uh, concentrating on for the next, uh, uh, you know, next few videos. So again, what's important here, well, everything's important, but the main thing that's important is where, uh, we, uh, right here, where we examine these three things, matrix multiplication, the inverse, and the transpose. Okay, so again, you've got examples of these in R. Now, I think what I want to do now is um, let's go back to the chalkboard and um, talk about some things in statistics. So matrices for regression. All right. Um, now, if we have data x1, y1, X2, Y2. Xn, Yn. So we have in order pairs. Uh, one of the first vectors that we're going to look at is a response vector y. And guys, a y vector is nothing more than this is going to be a column vector. And it's going to be nothing more than our y values. Okay. Another matrix we're going to look at quite a bit is a design matrix. And guys, we're going to call this matrix X. And again, considering our data that we have X1, Y1, X2, Y2, up to Xn, Yn, our design matrix is going to be an n by 2 matrix of the following. So yeah, I told you these ones in the first column were actually going to uh, show their eerie head. So again, design matrix looks like this. Now, uh, guys, our model uh, is in the form of uh, you know, y sub i's equal the expected value for y sub i's plus our errors for each term. Guys, that should be an i. Uh, so we can get uh, an expected value matrix. which is actually going to be a column uh, vector. And we can get an error vector. And it turns out that the error vector 
is in the n by one. And let me go back. The uh, and obviously the uh, expected uh, is uh, n by one two. Okay. So uh, this is our error vector. I don't think I gave. Yeah, let's let's give this a name. Uh, I don't know. It's just vector of um, you know whatever. Um, well, I mean not whatever, but <laughs> just call it whatever you want to. It's the vector of apples. Well, no, it's not. It's the vector of mean responses. So let's uh, let's just kind of settle on that. And you know, obviously, could go by other names as well. Uh, now, kind of putting all this together, with y being the expected value. Plus the air. We can look at this in this form. Which, from what we said, if we have the same size, so we have a, what an m by one and an m by one, uh, we could um, clearly. I tell you what, let's do. Have this equal to that matrix. Now, uh, you know, let's let's just say we've got uh, x1, y1, x2, y2, and x3, y3. Let's simplify the notation here. So we just have uh, three ordered pairs. So we could Multiply this times our beta matrix. And I'll probably call this most of the time the parameter vector. And you can see from what we know here, uh, you know, here we have a three by two. And uh, here we have a two by one. So the inside parts are the same. So we can multiply these things together. And of course, we're going to get a three by one matrix. Well, using, uh, you know, linear combination, we're going to take the first entry times the first entry plus the second entry times the second entry. Then we're going to concentrate on this row, this column. So we're going to take beta 0 plus beta 1 x2. And of course here we're going to have beta 0, beta 1 x3. 
Now, there would be nothing uh, to say that we can't generalize this. Uh, in the general, to generalize this, obviously, uh, this matrix. Going to be an important matrix too, as you might imagine. Okay, um, and then when we split that up and look at some stuff, it's going to play an important role. Now, there's two matrices that. Uh, I want us to examine, actually, no, 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 there's three matrices. And I say, you know, important. I mean, hell, everything's important, but the three that uh, are really important at this stage. Uh, one of the first matrices I want you to consider is, uh, you know, for the uh, response vector. And it's transpose. So what is this vector going to look like? What's the product of the y transpose times y going to look like? Well, remember the y vector. Look like this. So the transpose has to look like that. So we have here, we have a 1 by n. And here we have an n by 1. So the product matrix here is going to be a 1 by 1. And what's it going to look like? Well. Linear combination, boys and girls. First entry times the first entry. Second entry times the second entry. And so on. Which obviously is just going to be the matrix. of the sum of our y values squared. Uh, another matrix I want you to have on your radar is x transpose times y. Now let's go back and think about what uh, what x look like, our design matrix. Remember it had all those ones in front. I don't know how far we got to go back here but Goodness gracious, I've done a lot. All right, so a design matrix is a column of ones and then our uh, x coordinates of our order pair. So, should be no surprise to anybody that x transpose is going to look like this. And our y vector is going to be a column vector that looks like this. So, boys and girls, we're going to have a 2 by n, and we have an n by 1. So, our product matrix is going to be a 2 by 1. So we're going to have two rows and one column. So linear combination of the first row with the first column is going to give 1 times y1 plus 1 times y2 plus 1 times y3 plus 1 times y to the n because there should be no 
doubt in your mind this is just the sum of the y's. The next we're going to get x1 times y1 plus x2 times y2. So there really shouldn't be much uh, debate about what this is. It's just the sum of the products of x sub i times y sub i. Um, the other matrix I want you to, to kind of have on your radar, and the one I almost forgot about, is what does x transpose times x look like? Well, x transpose is 1, 1. And of course, x is now. First of all, let's examine the size that we're expecting. So here we have a two by n. Here we have an n by two. So guys, we're expecting a two by two matrix. All right, let's examine this. This is going to be a linear combination of our row ones and column one. So if we examine our row one with our column one. We're going to get one times one is one, plus one times one is one, plus one times one is one. Uh, okay, I'll stop. So one plus one plus one plus one plus one n times is just n. All righty, let's examine this part. Well, this is going to take row one, column two. So when we examine row one with column two, we're going to get one times x1 plus one times x2 plus one times x3 plus one times x4. Am I annoying yet? Plus dot 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 one times xn. So, boys and girls, this should be no surprise to you. That's just the sum of our x's. The bottom left entry is going to be row 2, column 1. So now we're concentrating on row 2, column 1. We'll get the same thing, don't we? We get x1 times 1 plus x2 times 1 dot 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 xn times 1. So, guys, there's no... Doubt that we get some of our x sub i's again. And finally, we're going to examine row 2, column 2. <coughs> <coughs> so that's going to be x1 times x1. Now let's think about this. So we have x1 times x1. And then we get x2 times x2. And finally, way out there, we're going to get xn squared. So boys and girls, there should be no surprise here that we get the sum of the x sub i's squared. Um, well, I could just keep going. I'm, I just actually love this stuff, I have to admit. But uh, I'll tell you what, we may do that. Let's, uh, have we got time to get into some cool stuff? Ah, uh, no, nah, we're, we're, we're over. So I'm keeping you late here, uh, about 10 minutes over, but um, I'll let you out early sometime. Okay, so uh, you guys have a good one. Um, so this will be the end of video uh, 28. Take care. Uh, okay, did I have all that shown? <laughs> uh, all right.